good morning. Oh, wait, this isn't on either, is it? Oh, let me see. Oh, wait, is it on? Do, I, I don't know. Do you hear me? I hear myself now. Okay, there you go. Okay, so, 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 so sorry. We had to turn stuff into Heritage Christian, and then I ended up in parent-teacher conferences, and you're looking at wild hair, no makeup. Row dogs, give me horn here. Good morning, Emma. Um, so I want to talk to you guys. Hey, Trevor. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the link that I sent to you guys for, hey, Carly, hey, CT, um, the link for the Zoom meeting that you guys are like, it's blocked, it's blocked, it's blocked. So... Here is your rogue teacher telling you, um, I don't know, I don't know what kind of dog fights I'm going to get in over this. I don't know, I don't know. But I will tell you that if you log in on another device that's not your school device, you can get in. So, um, there's a workaround. So if the district just says, we're not going to support this, then with our devices, then you just use another device. So that's the easiest workaround for those of y'all that haven't figured it out yet. Um, there's nothing wrong with the site. There's nothing wrong with the um, link. It's just that the district at this point is currently not allowing students to use Zoom with their devices. So our workaround at this point is use another device. Um, I'm probably going to compose an email today to some other people at Central Office and be like, seriously, can we not do this? Um, so evidently there are some security issues with Zoom that the district doesn't want to take responsibility for. Good, Luke. Thank you. So Luke says he emailed it to his personal email and then used it on a home computer, and you should be good to go there. So, um, yes, and I'm going to be grading them today. I think starting at 2, I'm going to call my mentor and see where we're at with that. I haven't even looked to see what you guys have done. I haven't even looked to see what's happening. I seriously took yesterday off like for real for the first time I think since all this had started I do feel like I maybe answered some emails and stuff but for me that's really good and so that's my workaround is it makes me sad because I don't know that all of you have a personal device I mean your cell phone should work but um, I know that your school computer is like your computer and so I, I want all of us to have equity in education. I want all of us to be able to use our stuff. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And this is an advantage that we just can't pass up. I'm in this daggone cohort working my tail end off so that you guys can have advantages that, you know, other kids may not have because their teachers aren't willing to go and do all this stuff. Like, I don't know very many people that are willing to, oh, God, guys, like, I don't even know what this afternoon is going to look like with all of this work that we're going to do. But it's going to be worth it. You're going to go all in. I'm going to go all in. We're going to go all in. And we're going to get it done. So that's where we're at with that is at this point, try a different device. And if you do not have a different device, I don't know. I don't know. We'll deal with that as it comes. Um, like I said, I just, I don't know how much, I don't know. I don't know how much fight there is, but once I found out that the workaround was, it's the device itself, it's not the program, that was my easy answer was, then we won't use your device and we'll still get our advantage. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, I did get some communication with people about you timed out, or the assignment went away, or, you know, shenanigans ensued. I got it. So, I'm having a couple of thoughts here. I was going to, like, I got one email from somebody that said that they were at work, and they kind of forgot, and 
Could I open it again? Um, I'm confused about where do we find our exam ID or number. I don't know. Um, did you watch the video that I sent out about what to do? Um, your exam ID and number for sure is going to be a communication that you get. Like we typically hand them out on paper from the school. So I'm assuming it's coming. Yes, I assume it's coming with an email. But you definitely don't want to, you know, have that out. Um, hopefully you guys noticed I built you guys units, video units for you to watch and to go through. I got an email and it said we would get it two days before the exam. Very good, Trevor Church. Way to be a contributor. Um, Trevor Church found like a seven foot black snake at his house. Uh, so cool. If any of you guys are uh, friends with Trevor on social media, you need to have him email you or whatever, snap you a picture of the Goliath beast that lives in his house. Um, I think it's a chicken snake. But it's a big old chicken snake. Super cool. Um, so that's where we're at. I hope you guys, it sounds like the majority of you, I, I, I haven't even looked to see how many of you did it. Um, but the option is, I'm thinking that the option is going to be after we grade them tonight, those of you that didn't do it or maybe want to try again, I will repost on um, AP Central if I can and let you guys have another swing at it. I just don't want a bunch of crap coming in on my behalf, if that makes sense. So everybody from Advanced Kentucky is going to be there. Good. No, don't kill it and eat it. I thought you were going to say, Bryson, you killed the FRQs. Um, everybody from Advanced Kentucky is going to be there. and um, Or not be there, but we're all going to be electronically there. And so I don't want, like, multiple copies. So, you know, like, if Luke Taylor were to see it open again, he may try to take it again. Just saying we all know and love Luke. And so I don't want duplicates showing up. So maybe after we do this today, you guys let me know if you'd like me to try to reopen that same exact exam. Oh, see, I'm telling you, the snakes are going to be out and moving today for sure. Um, and potentially like two other FRQs that are in the same vein. But that was very good practice for you guys. To, to keep going. All right, anything else for me? I had to, I had to log off of everything to just get your all's stuff going this morning. I was on a Zoom meeting or Google meeting and my, my um, camera wouldn't work. Not that everybody doesn't want to see all this hot messness, but we've been having some problems, y'all. Me and technology. Okay. Let's see where we're at with the slides. Oh, I haven't changed this to my other link. And I'll have to retitle it, won't I? Because today we're going to do grasslands. Okay, I got you here now. All right. Um, oh, I saw a grassland. Okay, grasslands, here we go. Okay. It would be cool if I could make. No, that's okay. It would be cool if I could make the chat, like the whole screen over here. So, um, grasslands. It's this picture, I think, 
kind of is the idyllic grassland situation that you're looking at. Again, we've got our tropical, our temperate, and our cold. So um, they still all mean the same thing. So hopefully the vernacular is improving with these biomes. Um, these little birds just made me happy. So um, that grassland. So I really appreciated when I was reading and studying up on like how do I make this discernment at an AP level versus like what I do with my regular biology kids, which is just, it has grass, right? So I found this and I thought this is perfect. It's too moist to be a desert, but it's too dry for the trees to like grow into a forest type status. So I feel like that kind of answers that question big picture wise as to why is this a grassland? Well, because grasses can grow, but trees can't. Um, but yet, We've got enough rain that's definitely not a desert. Um, I would, you know, probably try to kiss that thing in the nose. Uh, they do persist due to all of the trials and tribulations that they experience. Um, it is definitely not unheard of for there to be seasonal droughts. Uh, grazing is primary in grassland situations. Fires, we've learned in AP Environmental, are not only good but can be beneficial right um and it, so it, it establishes that diversity do i have oh sorry okay i've got that turned off now all right so the savanna is listen this is on your test on this unit test that i'm going to give you i was amazed at how many questions they asked about the savanna so pay attention um and the savanna is kind of that quintessential what everybody thinks of as far as grasslands grow. So you've got, um, I picked this picture because one, it shows some of the biodiversity. Um, I also picked this picture because it does show there are trees. It's not completely void of trees, but they're sparse. They're scattered out. Um, they do have the rainy seasons. Uh, we do have, I mean, clearly, why would you have a giraffe if you didn't have trees in this area? And as far as plant adaptations go, um, we talked about adaptations with the desert. Um, so understand that those are, the, we talked about adaptations taking hundreds of thousands of millions of years, right? So please hear me when I say adaptations do not happen overnight. You don't have a baby that's born as an albino and then there's a blizzard and then it's all of a sudden it's an advantage to be white and all your offspring are born white. Like that's not how advantages, that's not how adaptations work. Um, so these plants have adapted over hundreds of thousands to up to millions of billions of years um, to survive in this environment. And those ad adaptations include how their roots grow. So there is a tree called the uh, mesquite tree. Mesquite is a flavor of barbecue, I believe, but they have a what's called a tap root, T-A-P, tap root. So it's like, think carrot. It's like one uber long carrot. And the mesquite trees typically are very hard to get started because their tap root isn't long enough. But if they can survive long enough for their tap root to grow down into the groundwater reserves, then they're good to go, right? They have that one root. They don't have a bunch of roots out. They have one tap root. Um, so tap root is one way that trees like this survive in these environments. And then the other is they have just very superficial root systems. So I know a lot of the cacti have those superficial root systems. And superficial means on the top, right? So the roots are growing on top of the ground. And then the morning dew that they optimize their um, surface area. So they get the most of the water. Um, has there been intermediate species? Can. Uh, they, there can be. Um, we certainly know that the fossil records aren't totally complete, right? We've talked about that with our evolution. And um, it would make sense for there to be times to see intermediate species between, between the two, for sure.
And so we will not watch this together. We're not going to get banned from YouTube over this, but I want you to know that I enjoyed this very much. This is one of my favorite snippets of any Disney movie ever. And then you'll find a little extra giggle um, if you click on this link later and see. But this, when you think of Savannah, I feel like we all have a connection to the Lion King. And so I think that will help guide your answers as you move through. Um, for some of you all, this was the Lion King that you saw first. And it was like the real whatever. And all oh, the dry sea, Simba, this is our kingdom, right? So that's the quintessential Savannah. This is um, a climatogram. I think once we get through the deserts, I'm pretty much done doing the climatograms because I feel like you've got it. But you can see um, where you've got December, January, February, even going in March, it's starting to have a little bit of precipitation, but that's clearly the dry season. And then you can clearly see the rainy season or the wet season. Um, and then the line is indicative of the temperature. And, and you got this. You got this on lockdown. Temperate grasslands are our second type, right? So you've got your savannas, and then you've got your temperate grasslands, which are, um, I think of, oh, this is the voice. What is his name? Oh, I love him so much. Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton lives in Oklahoma, and that is what I think of. I think in my head, Blake Shelton lives in this house, and this is, this is the temperate grasslands. So instead of it being like the Lion King, where it's hot and it's dry and, you know, you're living for the rainy seasons, this winters can be ridiculously cold. Summers can be ridiculously hot. The annual precipitation is pretty sparse and is unpredictable. So um, I just, I always think about Blake Shelton in Oklahoma and, uh, you know, why? I don't know. They do have tremendously fertile topsoil. And a lot of this we could even tie into no-till farming, right? The above ground parts for most of the grasses die and decompose each year, and you don't have people tilling up all of this land. So that allows that organic matter to accumulate. And then the root system, um, I don't know if you guys have tried to pull out crab grass out of your yard or out of your flower beds or whatever but if you ever have what maggie maggie stewart your assignment is to watch the lion king um that seems just cruel to me so anyway i digress um so the topsoil is held in place with these thick network of these intertwined roots. That's why I was talking to you about crabgrass. It's incredible how strong these roots are. And when you think about herding animals, grazing animals, um, they're not messing around, right? Like they're strong beasts and they're pulling things up. And if your grasses were able to be pulled up by the roots, you would have bare, bare soil left behind, which would... Yes, encourage erosion, and yes, all of those bad things. And so um, it is an adaptation that the roots are strong and that you don't pull them up by the roots. And so it's really, truly been defined. Um, now, there's going to be way less of you, crabgrass is evil, that have seen Little House on the Prairie. Um, our Heritage Christian kids, they were allowed to watch Little House on the Prairie. So they have seen it, but um, this this was like a rerun when I was a child. So I certainly don't expect you guys to have necessarily seen Little House on the Prairie, but just in case if you have, this would be our um, temperate grassland situation where they had where they were living at at this time. Um, the U.S. has short grass prairies and tall grass prairies. And guess what? It's The difference is, is it short or is it tall? So um, rainfall determines how much the grasses are going to grow. And in all prairies, the winds blow almost continuously. So the places in the U.S. that have these prairies are synonymous with the wind turbines, just about, I would say. So this is, I hope, a controlled burn. I tried to look that up. Oh, see, Maggie. So, see, you got one or two. 
Um, so fires in the summer and the fall combine with the winds and it maintains the grassland. It keeps the trees from growing. It allows um, a good wind flow across there. And here is our grassland climatograph, which is, again, you know, I, if in doubt, if they don't give you a key, the line that goes across the whole gra the graph is almost always, the temperature and the bars are almost always the precipitation. Like, I feel like if they don't give you a key, that's how you need to look at it. And you just need to pay attention to units and um, and those those small details. But again, you can see um, rainfall, some form of precipitation is happening every month of the year. There is no month with completely void of rainfall or precipitation in some form. And then they have cool, hot, cool. So now, cold grasslands, which is our Arctic tundra. Um, I, and I included this map because, you know, I, you know how I feel about geography. Like, we should all love geography. But it does at least show, I think, like, I think that that's the top of Asia. So, I've grown as a human. Like, that would, it would not be beyond me. I'm just telling you. For me to be like, I don't know, that could be Australia. Um, which would definitely not be Arctic tundra, right? Like, no. But, I think... <laughs> <laughs> That's part of like Asia, the continent, and uh, close to the poles. So Arctic tundra, it's going to just lie just south of the Arctic polar ice cap, and it's going to be pretty much covered with ice and snow pretty much all of the time. Um, the one cool thing about this is the amount of sunlight that it gets because of its placement on our globe, because of its latitude. Um, the amount of sunlight that you get can be tempered. So there are, there was even a vampire movie. Um, Wick, congrats. Congrats even go there. Yes. Oh, for sure. And we're going to get to that. Like this that you're seeing underneath the snow, that's the, um, oh, what are they? They look like reindeer. They use their snouts and they, they still graze through this environment. Um, so under the snow, they have moss, they have grass, they have lichen, they have dwarf shrubs. Um, the, clearly our stuff can't grow here, right? Like they've adapted to live in this environment. Um, trees and tall plants can't survive the cold and windy, winter, windy tundra because they would lose too much of their heat. And this is permafrost, which needs to be definitely added to your vocabulary. So... Permafrost just isn't frozen ground. Like, don't go outside in the winter next winter if we have a cold winter and the ground is frozen and you say, oh, look, it's permafrost, not permafrost. So the ground has to maintain its frozen status for at least two consecutive years to be considered permafrost, hence the perma, meaning permanent. Um, it's actually a big deal. Permafrost is a huge deal in um, a lot of the, oh, Sorry, my nose is itching. In the uh, conversations with global warming, climate change, there are gases that are caught in the permafrost, and as it melts, they release those gases and um, changes uh, climate temperature. And it's like special grasses. Moose, no. I don't think moose. Caribou, yes. Sorry, guys, my nose is itching. I hate that for you. I hate that you have to see that. Up close. Yes, caribou. Yes, that's it. So, the permafrost is very important to the ecosystem and our limited knowledge. You know, we think, well, permafrost must be bad. No, it's it's quite important for these areas um, to, to maintain their permafrost. So, um, you just, you can't, like, this person has dug down and they're exposing the permafrost. So here is summer in the Arctic tundra, and they say it is amazing. I've clearly never been, but it's somewhere, your book says seven to eight weeks. I've read everything from as little as five weeks, but in this, in this snap of time, you have no nighttime. It's sunlight all 24 hours a day, 
everything blooms, everything's buzzing, everything's alive, colors are everywhere, and then just like that, it's gone. Snow again. So it's kind of like, um, I, I would think it's kind of like when I went to Michigan with Young Life. And um, in the daytime, in July, like mid to late July, it was 70 five maybe 80 degrees at night it was sweatshirt and shorts weather which is my favorite kind of weather you know I don't know 60 degrees no mosquitoes no bugs no ticks no nothing and there's this guy named Kid Rock which a lot of you um you know probably don't know who that is but there's a guy named Kid Rock and he sings this song and he talks about it's like summertime in northern Michigan, and I always sung those lyrics, and I was like, that's dumb. I don't know what that means. Now I know what that means. Summertime in northern Michigan is heaven, and I will never go south for the summer. Like, that's crazy. Like, this is hot. This is humid, so I'm going to drive even further to get more hot. No, I want to go north. So, like, last summer when me and the ladies went to Washington State, that's what I'm talking about, right? Like you get some relief, but you still get the beauty. So that's what I think this must be like. Um, as far as the temperatures, I'm, I mean, I'm going to say it's not a balmy 80 degrees or something. It's probably, you know, somewhere around 60, but amazing. Uh, many shallow lakes, marshes, bogs, ponds, and other seasonal wetlands form during this snap of warm weather. And that should make sense to you, right? Um, you've got all this snow and snow... Like, if you get, I don't know what the conversion is. Ah, good, Xander. I knew you would. Um, and he's a Republican, too. Um, yes. Yes. No, we should definitely go up north in the summer. Um, so there is a conversion. Harry, if you want to look it up, that would be awesome. Of snow to rainfall. So it's something like how a foot of snow is only this many inches of water and it's not much and that should make sense to you right like on a molecular scale we know that um <laughs> yeah no we don't want the corona yeah you're right um but you know you know snowflake you know a water molecule like scientifically molecularly thinking it should make sense to you that when the snow melts it's gonna there it's gonna expose the ground because it's not as much snow snow condenses into to water and so you see these ponds like this is in the tundra um and i don't know what those little white cottony you know dandelion-y looking things are but it's it's cool um hordes of mosquitoes black flies and other insects thrive in these shallow surface pools they say that they um come up like they they do the whole um it's not hibernate they do the whole migration northern migration just to be here during this time because there's just so much activity that's going on so this is a scientist and those are supposedly mosquitoes over his head that seems pretty terrifying so they serve as food for large colonies of migratory birds especially waterfowl that migrate from the south to to nest and breed in the bogs and the ponds up north, which is exactly opposite of what we're used to. Um, hey, Logan, glad you could make it. Check out this owl. Like, that's a bad owl we got right there. I was pretty proud of that picture. So, animals in this biome survive the intense winter colds through adaptations. They have thick coats. They have um, water-repellent furs right? Um, they are able to keep, keep the moisture away from their skin, and that's definitely key. Um, I don't know what an Arctic lemmy is, but I bet it's not messing around. Okay, for temperatures between 15 and 19 degrees Fahrenheit, multiply rainfall by 20 between 10 and 14, multiply by 30 to get the amount of snow. Yeah, so it's 20 to 30 times the conversion oh look at this sweet thing look Kaylee Payne that would it would play with your goats um 
the tundra is a fragile biome, and that is one thing that if you were to be asked about different natural settings, natural environments, um, it is pretty fragile because the soils are nutrient poor, the growing season is so short, vegetation is, you know, everything grows like slowly in the cold. So I liken this also to the deserts, right? So the desert is another that recovers so slowly to any sort of devastating events. Um, let's see. It's a mouse. Oh, okay. Um, headwing, okay. That burrows in the snow. They are tiny. My grandparents got them one year. Okay. Um, looks like a chipmunk. Isn't that those arctic foxes? Yes, yes, for sure. Um, so that, of course, your text always brings up. And now this is an actual military base that is in the arctic tundra. Um, I want to say this is Greenland. Um, I kind of went down a, a dark hole, a, a quite an intense wormhole when I was doing research for this. And um, they want to talk about how just the little simple things that we're doing leave a footprint that is maintained for could be up to thousands of years. Now, how do we know that? We haven't done this for thousands of years. We don't know. Like, again, that's all just speculation. But the you can see that you you know at this point the flare of the book right so oil drilling sites pipelines mines military bases those are all fossil fuel connoisseurs and so your environmental science book is going to tell you that those are all you know like pimples of satan and that if we do these things there that it's never going to recover i would also like to say um <laughs> that you know, God, the God of your understanding or the lack thereof is omnipotent and magnificent and um, our earth heals itself pretty regularly. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to do damage for centuries, but if asked, you may want to throw that out there. So, yeah, Greenland. Okay, yay. Um, so, serving at the, this is Thule. I have a Thule uh, bike rack and I thought it was called a Thule. <laughs> but evidently you say Thule, so um, please, as always, learn from my mistakes and um, and know that it's Thule, and uh, they they're we're there, right? Like they're they're doing it in Greenland. So this is Barlow, As um, Alaska, and this is another Arctic tundra. And I kind of wanted to throw them both out there just because look at how different the precipitation is. So I have questions, right? Um, is this not technically a tundra because of the lack of precipitation? Is this a different year? You know, I don't know. Uh, the bulk of these are just made for you to ingest information. And I don't know that they're necessarily concerned about being super accurate. Um, but then the next thing that jumps out is the scale. So if you look at precipitation in millimeters, they're going up 50, right? Here, they're doing the precipitation and they're not telling you what this is in. I mean, you know, like, is this also, is this in centimeters? I don't know. Um, so the scale is very much needing to be taken into consideration because these two may not be very different depending on what that what that precipitation scale is and then the temperature the reason why it is so vast is because the temperature is so daggone cold they had to go down to negative 30. so it looks like if like just to the layman's eyes if you were to look at the scale you'd be like oh my gosh it got so hot in the tundra. No, no. No, it didn't even get to five. All right? And it just hit there once and then, like, plummeted again. So take into consideration the scales that you have been given because they do look very different. But the, the second one isn't a great, isn't a great um, 
chromatogram because we don't even know. We don't know what the temperature is in. We don't know what the preci precipitation is in. They just look different. <laughs> all right, so that's it. That's all of grasslands, and, um, and we'll stop here today because that's, you know, we're taking it just small bites at a time because I know that you guys are um, trying to work hard on your, on your AP Central stuff. So, remember, I have picked, I have opened up all of these FRQs for you. If I were you, I, you know, it's your chicken. Pick two FRQs, just open one up, Give yourself 25 minutes to answer it and then shut it down and then go straight into a second FRQ. Give yourself 15 minutes and just do it. Um, that's all I'm going to do if I have to piece these things together is, you know, pick two. 25 minutes, 15 minutes and do them. Um, you know, if you feel like you don't want to do that, pick one FRQ, give yourself 25 minutes and then stop. You've got to condition yourself to the 25 minutes, 15 minutes done. Um, the Zoom meeting, again, so far, I'm telling you my workaround is it'll work on another device. So you can take that email address. You have an invitation to this event because your teacher is participating in Advanced Kentucky. And I'm just so daggone upset that, I, like, this is an unprecedented thing. Kids are getting to see behind the curtain, and we're being blocked. So I just don't know. I just don't know how much O'Skims got left in the tank as far as, like, you know, fighting and pissing people off um, with my anxiety. You know, I certainly don't want to be in fetal position in the shower. So I don't know. So it does give me... It does give me comfort to know that you guys have a workaround, and it just may be we're just not using our devices. That we're, you know, if you have to, email it to your personal account, go to the public library if it's opened at that time, and um, do it there. Or, I don't know, beg your neighbor. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Um, I just, I don't know if this is a fight that I'm going to win. I don't know if this is a fight that I'm going to be able to fight. Because people have evidently broke into Zoom meetings and they've shown their business on there and all of that stuff. So I get that the school is trying to protect itself for, or the district. I don't know that the school even knows this is happening. But the district is trying to protect itself from exposing you all to people exposing themselves. But I, this is going to, this is going to, this is going to be worth it. Um... So that's, that's that. So take that, take that invitation on Google Classroom and, and open it on a different device and enroll and then talk to me if there's, if the school laptop is the only option for you ever, period. Um, and there's just no other way because I, I, I don't know that the district's answer, because the district's answer to me was absolutely not. I mean, I only asked one person so far. But things get dicey pretty quick around here. So um, you have other devices. As long as it's not your school device, you can be involved in this if you're picking up what I'm laying down. Okay, so FRQ yourself. Um, where are we at with our pacing? I have grasslands today, and I have 7-2 vocab quiz tomorrow. And that will... Um, is that what you all have? Grasslands today, lecture today, 7-2 vocab quiz tomorrow. Um, gosh, look at this. Look at my lesson plan book. I'm trying to help Ace with his, um, pre-algebra final. Do you guys remember those days? If you could go back and do it again, would you learn better in pre-algebra so it wouldn't be so hard? Oh, did you? I don't even think you guys saw. <laughs> okay. Um, so tomorrow your lecture is going to be over forests.
and I'll get up and put on makeup for, or not tomorrow, but Wednesday. I'll get up and put on makeup for y'all. And um, I anticipate there being some form of communication between us for um, the AP scoring. And then after Forests, Oh, we'll just do 7-Forest, 7-3-Lecture. It will be on Thursday. And then Chapter 7, Unit Exam on Friday. On Friday. And that will take you to the 8th. And we're continuing to... After that will be the week before the exam, so we will talk about um, aquatic situations. I don't know if aquatic situations... I have a hummingbird. I'm so excited. Um, we'll at least talk about them so that you'll be ready. Um, everybody seems to believe that there's going to be a biome question that incorporates all of that learning and then uh, some sort of renewable and non-renewable is kind of what I'm seeing on uh, the APES Facebook page. Um, let's see. Logan Titchener, no, no, no. Me and CT skipped the pre-algebra. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, seventh grade pre-algebra Shuffle, it's a thing. Uh, and you're welcome, CT, you're welcome. Uh, we're just going to keep working. This is Teacher Appreciation Week. Why not? Let's appreciate each other with, you know, some love and some good hard work. Uh, and, you know, if if you didn't get a chance to do the practice FRQs, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Again, we'll... Look at that tomorrow. I thought about getting up and looking at it yesterday, but I knew if I got up and I came over here, it would be like 12 hours on my laptop. So, I did not do it and gave my time to my family instead because I'm so cool like that. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? You're welcome, Lukey. All right. Well, then everybody has their marching orders. Please disseminate this information to your friends, people that aren't actively watching. Uh, tell them about the Google. I'm not going to put on Google Classroom to use another device at this point. Again, pissing people off, right? Like the likelihood of them watching this YouTube chat and being like, she's telling them to do things, uh, very slim. Um, and at this point, it's just a workaround, right? Right? Um, maybe they'll come through, but I'm not going to put on Google Classroom. I don't think I'm going to put on, I don't know. I may need to think about that. I may, may, I may put that on there. I have to think about that. Like, if this will work on other devices. Um, maybe one of you guys wants, can you guys put that on there? Like, can you add a comment on there and be like, hey, did you know that you can do this? Oh, thanks, Logan. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, if you guys, just please spread the word. I want everybody to have this advantage. Uh, the last thing I heard is that there's going to be the same number of threes, fours, and fives as there always, as there always are. So that means that, um, it's going to be carnivorous, right? Like, it's going to, it's going to be, you're going to have to suit up and show up to get your, to get your scores. So, Train daily like a good, like the good mental athlete you are. Time yourself on your FRQs. Um, if you've got an FRQ and you don't really know how you did and you want me to look at it, send it to me. I'd be happy to do that with you. Um, I just, tonight I'm going to be scoring all of your, all of your um, FRQs. So I'll be doing two, your two FRQs. I mean, <laughs> like there was one, I will not name you, but he hit like a backspace button or something and like his whole answer disappeared and gosh, I am so sorry. Like I still laugh because I can imagine this person and I share a lot of the same com computer diseases and so I can only imagine <laughs> what your face looked like. So, you know, 
and we're not going to be alone in that. There's going to be everybody that's going to have computer problems, and these are these are good drills to just get them posted. So th thank you, CT, for putting on there. Like, just this will work on another device. It's not a DCPS device. Perfect. All right, family. Well, I love you, my sweet family. It's uh, almost noon. We've made it to 1157 again. So um, with that, I will bid you adieu. Um, oh, now this. Okay, good. So this all caught up. And um, y'all be thinking about me today at 2 o'clock when I'm doing nothing but reading your stuff. It's going to be an awesome party. Love you.